This episode of Geared Up is brought to you by National Car Rental. Take control of your travel experience with National Car Rental's Emerald Club. Visit nationalcar.com to find out more. The rumor mill over the past week was saying that all of that cursor support that we just talked about and the trackpad, that was an iOS 14 feature or an expected Mm. iOS 14 feature. So being that it's coming now, it's like, okay, what is coming for the iPad in September? I've heard rumors of a revolutionary. I don't even know if I can say it here. Just say it. All right. I'm going to say it. Just say it to us. So I have heard, and I I don't know if it's confirmed for the new iPad OS, but from reliable sources that Apple's Mm. working on like a crazy, I consider it revolutionary software feature. So the home screen for Apple has stayed pretty stagnant, right? It's Mm -hmm. pretty much except for the last iPad OS. What I hear is coming to iOS 14 and get ready for this. It's being able to place a single icon the bottom of the page. Oh, let that sink in for a minute. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. But that, <laughs> let that sink in. Just a single icon right there. Bam. Ooh, move your icons where you want. Anywhere them. you want. Ooh, it takes courage. Courage. <laughs> it does take courage. Bravery and a foresight to where the industry is heading. 2020 knocking down barriers, man. Welcome to Geared Up, brought to you by National Car Rental. I'm Andrew Edwards. I am John Rentinger. Geared Up is a show that brings you the latest in tech gadgets and games and this week alongside myself and john Rettinger, we've got a special, special guest. guest another special guest will he live up to the previous guests john what do you think <laughs> i'm gonna say a very solid maybe <laughs> there you That's go fair. there you go we've got That's That's we've got fair. my good friend kevin neither aka kevin the tech ninja in case anybody doesn't know who you are even though they should if they don't let them know who you are and where they can find you online yeah, I'm Kevin Neether, the tech ninja, and I'm just a dude that loves technology and loves to talk about it on my YouTube channel. You can find me anywhere online at Tech Ninja Speaks. I'm on TikTok now. I'm not going to dance for you. I'm not dancing for you, but I'll talk to you about technology on TikTok. So there you go. You can find me any single place online, even Pinterest. I'm there. Tech Ninja <laughs> Speaks. What are you pinning on Pinterest, man? Why don't you follow me and find out? Come to my board. Right, you know what? Come Fair. to my board. <laughs> I, I, I am now intrigued that I may actually learn I like how to tease. use Pinterest. I like the tease. Kevin, I got a question to ask you before we start. Oh, yes. God. How are things at the Tech Ninja? Things are great at the Tech Ninja. Good. Thank you so much for asking. Happy. <laughs> always, always happy to, always happy to hear it, my friend. <laughs> All right. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin is a YouTube creator, in case you don't know who he is. If you watch my content... You've probably seen him because uh, he appears in a lot of my stuff. In fact, you're going to be in a video that I'm about to publish later this week where I tell people that you lent me your visible SIM card. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually doing a visible video as well. And the funny thing is I switched my wife over to visible and my dad recently, and they're doing the party pay, which so far so good. It's only been a month, but yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Like affordable plans just make sense because my dad was paying over a hundred bucks a month. For his plan, and now he's down to $30 a month. Interesting. Can I ask, is this a sponsored component, or is this just something you wanted to try? So it was a sponsored video, for sure, but I actually started using it and started paying for it for my family after using it. Just one of those things that just synced up. It was a sponsored spot, but at the same time, the service was good, and I actually liked it. So it was just a a win-win there. I'm asking because I actually did something similar. I moved my grandparents and my mother-in-law over to Mint Mobile. Okay. And it wasn't like a sponsored thing at all, but... My grandparents, they were on my Verizon plan. I was with Verizon. I was paying 50 bucks a month for them. They were using like four megabytes. Of data. I mean, <laughs> oh. it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't even like, oh. a, they have an iPhone SE and I think their data is whenever they check mail. Right. And usually they're oh. not, Bless know, their not that far from home. So I was like, well, that seems stupid. <laughs> yeah. So I did bit. a mint mobile thing for them. It was $180 for the entire year. And they what? get three gigs of data a month, which they probably yeah. won't use three gigs wow. of data for an entire year. And then I told my mother-in-law about it. Well, she's like, well, I'm paying $60 a month for my one line from AT&T. She's like, I don't use any data. I want that too. Yeah. Did it for her also. Yeah. It's funny. Anytime I post something about cell phone plans on Twitter, you know, people from Europe are like, oh, I'm paying $11 for all this data and stuff like that because I know our plans are very expensive. So I just love seeing other options out there for more affordable plans for people who don't need all that stuff, which I'm always for. And especially for me in my area, Verizon is the best in my area. So, yeah. um, you know, Visible Mobile uses Verizon. So it just... it just but They're owned by Verizon, aren't they? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. It's weird because Verizon also just launched Yahoo Mobile, which is the exact yeah. same price and exact same features as Visible Mobile, which they also own. So they have basically two similarly priced 
I don't know if you call them MVMOs or not, because they own them both, that are exactly the same except for name. Yeah. So, Kevin, let me ask you a question, because Drew and I discovered something interesting last week, and I kind of discovered it by accident. Yeah. Did you know that if you pay for a cell phone plan with, let's say, AT&T or Verizon, and you just sign up for a plan in store, that not all plans are created equal as far as the speed of data you can get? Like, I had no idea that there was essentially like toll roads for faster data on cell phones. And just by paying for a service, you weren't getting access to those toll roads. Yeah, I only found out because this visible mobile, I was doing some research as far as how Verizon uses data and, you know, they prioritize data depending on the type of plan you have and things like that. Only reason I know that. But beyond that, I had no idea at all. It's a wild thing that like you can pay for a plan and and think you're going to get just whatever the fastest service available is. And that's like not even close to close to being the case. I just I was shocked by it. I didn't know. I'm like, am I the only one that didn't know that? Yeah, you know, cell phones and the airline industry, I swear, it feels like they're so consumer hostile right now. It's just, there's so many rules and regulations and and ways they can kind of get over on the consumer, which really bothers me. All right. Well, John, I like that segue because we need to follow up from last week. Last week, we talked about your journey into the world of cell phone carriers. You're still in the middle of, not even in the middle, you actually completed your switch over to Android from iOS, at least for your mobile phone. So catch us up on what you've learned, because last week I asked you, based on these new speeds that you found, is consumer 5G actually faster than business LTE, or is that not the case? Okay, so here's just a real quick summation for anybody that missed last week's podcast. You should definitely go ahead and download it. I switched carriers from Verizon to AT&T, but AT&T for business. And with AT&T for business, you get access to what's called QCI 6 which is like their fastest, fast possible. If you're at a sporting event, sometime in the future, we get to go to sporting events again, and everybody's trying to send a picture or download something, you will always be prioritized in what's called the fast lane. So when other people are getting 10 megabits down, you'll be getting you know, 100 or 200. So that alone was interesting enough. So AT&T has a bunch of sub-6 5G, and that's essentially the slower of the 5G yeah. with less wall penetration. And there's a bunch of areas near here five minutes away. So before social distancing was something that was kind of mandated, I went out and I found one of the 5G locations by me. I took my S20 Ultra. That was an AT&T S20 Ultra. And I was looking up at the building that I knew the towers were on. And my phone was saying 5GE, which essentially was (laughs) LTE. I couldn't, I could not figure out why I wasn't getting 5G on my 5G phone when I knew I was getting 5G service. Right. And this is probably an issue a lot of people will have, right? Why am I not getting 5G? Why don't I see 5G? And I am speculating that the carriers really don't want you to be using their 5G right now, <laughs> is my guess. So I have a relationship with some of the AT&T representatives. I reach out to them and they were like, hmm, try resetting your carrier settings, which erases all of your, your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth history. You got to do all that stuff. Right. So that was annoying. So I did that. Then I had to turn my phone on to airplane mode on and off. And then... I saw five bars of 5G, okay, which is pretty awesome. And it was just a regular ultra wideband 5G. I believe millimeter wave shows up as 5G plus. And I was super excited to start speed testing. And before I started speed testing in the same location with let's just call it LTE, I think I got about 100 down. And when I switched over to 5G, yes, again, the building was right above me. I took my phone outside, so there was nothing blocking it just to be sure. Any guesses on speed? I mean, you have direct line of sight here, so I'm hoping that you're going to tell me you had like a minimum of 800 megabits down. This is sub six. It's not millimeter wave. Still, still, you're right there. It's line of sight. Kevin, what do you think? Fair, fair. Yeah, man, hopefully 700, 800 megabits per down. I'm pulling up. I tweeted the actual results when it happened, so I will tell you. So the actual results that I got on LTE was 90 down. The up doesn't really matter. It was 23 up. It was 90 down in the same location. With real 5G was 56. What? Oh. Down. <laughs> uh, that was okay. that was my reaction as well. And yeah. what I began to realize was if I had to reset my carrier settings, put my phone into Wi-Fi mode and turn it off, it appears the carriers are not really ready for people to be using this 5G. Now, the technical answer is that there's a lot of it's carrier aggregation going on and LTE bands are being prioritized. Mm-hmm. And Samsung needs to push out an update to sort of make this work better. But the consumer doesn't care about that. I just care about what are right. my speeds, right? 
Yeah, of course. So there are things going on in the background that can easily fix this and address this and get true 5G speeds. But if this is a problem with, let's call the Samsung S20, the flagship 5G phone, then that that at least is an issue right now with 5G as a whole that will presumably get fixed with with software updates and, and carrier updates. Now, with AT&T, do they charge more for a 5G plan? I do not believe so. Right now, none at all. And the same priority that the business lines got on LTE, they will also get when 5G gets congested. At least that's the plan right now. Okay. Which is kind of interesting. It is interesting. So theoretically, I should have seen like blazing speeds. Yeah. I actually had a similar experience with Verizon over the summer when they launched it in, I would say, quote unquote, Detroit. They pretty much launched it in a Detroit suburb and they told me exactly where to go for it. And I found out it was pretty much a 20 foot radius of where 5G yeah. was. No, that, uh, that's yeah. a millimeter wave. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just the moment I walked out of that area, it was gone. And I had to stand in one specific spot and do a speed test to kind of see the speeds. But the moment I stepped out of that, it was it was dead. So it was like, terrible. why would someone pay $10 more a month? And at that time, you had to buy a specific 5G phone. You had to buy the S10 5G. Like, why would I do that just to stand in one spot to use my phone and, and pay more for it? Yeah, I mean, that, that's fair. That's, the, that's one of the big downsides of millimeter wave. It's the crazy speeds. But like if somebody walks in front of you or you step out of that <laughs> radius, you don't get those speeds. So I think the moral is that 5G is really not quite ready for mass adoption. It's more of a, oh, if you get it, that might be nice. Maybe we'll get some faster speeds. But it's nothing that is a must have for right now. But I, I do think in the next four to six months when this carrier aggregation happens and the carriers start pushing out these updates that sort of make 5G the priority, I think you will start to see those big differences. So I think the big question for you two, I guess, yeah. do you put any priority on buying a 5G phone now in March and assuming that people are going to keep it for a year? Or do you say just wait until next year and, and get 5G then? I honestly think it's going to go the same way it went with 4G LTE, which was the Samsung phones were first with 4G LTE, which is actually, and we can actually tell this story in length in a future episode. HTC was first. HTC Thunderbolt, correct? Thunderbolt. Well, what yeah. happened yeah. was HTC had the Thunderbolt, but Samsung flooded the market with multiple Very LTE true. phones and then made deals with all the carriers so that when someone came into a carrier store and asked for a new phone, they would sell or push the Samsung devices. And that's actually how Samsung overtook HTC as the king of Android. In That's phone sales, yes. And I have the full story on that. We'll talk about that in another episode because it's extremely interesting how Samsung did this. But I think it's going to be similar. We saw Samsung launch 5G last year when it wasn't really around. And then with LTE, when Apple announced the iPhone 5 with LTE, I remember because I was going to switch carriers because Verizon had it and no one else did. And three days, so after Apple announced the phone, Three days before that phone was released, I got press releases from every other carrier, MVNOs, everybody saying, hey, we're launching LTE. Here's like the 50 cities we're going to be in by this yeah. Friday, which was the iPhone release day. And so I think we're going to see when Apple announces a 5G phone, that's really going to be when all these carriers have everything, all their ducks in a row, if you will, for 5G to work for the masses. That's fair. Mm -hmm. And I, I maintain that Apple will announce a 5G phone this year. But their real 5G phone, the one where they made the modem, won't come till 2021. I think that's when you get sort of the optimum 5G experience. Mm. But I agree. And I think anybody who's going to buy a phone and keep it for a year, if they have the option, should go that 5G route. I think things are going to change really drastically over the next six months. I don't know that you're going to see many non-5G phones this year anyway. Like yeah, if you're buying I, a phone this year, you're probably going to, it's just like checking the box, kind of like buying a TV this year. It's going to be 4K. Yeah. I was going to say there's not many phones that are the 5G edition of a phone anymore. It's just this is the phone. It has 5G in it. Any flagship phone coming out this year, I would hope. So, do you guys think Apple's going to do it, or do you think I'm think I'm off? Oh, they're doing it for sure. This is the year. Ooh. Yeah, I agree. I would like to agree, but I still think Apple's going to wait it out another year. Apple just seems to be they're very cautious with everything, which I appreciate because when they roll something out, they seem like they roll it out at the right time and it's always there. But I don't think it's still ready yet, personally. But I would love to be wrong. You will Sir. be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speaking of Apple. The next transition, the smooth segue, Apple just announced some new products this week. We've got the new Power Beats, which are true. wired headphones for that are optimized for working out. Longer battery life, 15 hours on these headphones. 
Yeah, they're kind of wired. They they plug into the phone, or that they were just yeah. have like a cord around goes around your neck. No, they're they wait. Well, unless I'm incorrect, Power Beats have been. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I thought Power Beats plugged in. Power Beats Pro were wireless. Honestly, the pictures I've seen, I didn't see that they were plugged in, but I could be. I could you be mistaken. What? Maybe I'm, you're right. The Power no. Beats Pro are the wireless ones. No, yeah, I have right the now. impressions that that they connect to each other behind your head and it's wireless yeah, to you. Right. That's why it has a battery life. I mean, it wouldn't you're have right. a battery life. It plugs into your phone. Okay. You that's what? what I thought also. You're correct. You're correct. Okay. Cool. So technically we're all correct. There's wires because they connect <laughs> to each other, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. They connect to each other. So better sound quality, hands-free Siri, 15 hour battery life are the additions along with a 25% price cut. So if you're looking for those types of headphones for working out, new power beats from Apple, but even more exciting is there is a new MacBook Air that now ships with twice the amount of storage and the new scissor switch keyboard that we got on the 16-inch model. So if you're looking for a new MacBook Air, there's a brand new one. But even more exciting, perhaps, at least for me, and John, you might agree here because you said your favorite device, your favorite tech device that you happen to own is your iPad Pro. True. Apple has announced a brand new iPad Pro for the 2020 year. It's got a new A12Z Bionic processor. So I'm assuming that means it's even better than the the X series. It's two letters. It's two letters better (laughs) than the X series. Right. We're going from the A10X to the A12Z. That's a big jump. Dual cameras now on the iPad, along with a LiDAR sensor, magic keyboard, a new magic keyboard with real clicky clacky keys and the USB-C port on the keyboard new cursor support so there's a trackpad on the keyboard but you can also use a mouse or external trackpad more microphones for better audio wi-fi 6 is packed into this as well this is a big upgrade for the ipad at least in my opinion what do you guys think yeah it's definitely a big upgrade the ipad is getting so close to replacing a computer now it's to the point where if someone's looking to buy a computer I ask what their needs are. And if it's not something, you know, hyper specific, I'm recommending them to get an iPad with a keyboard. Like what's it's, a computer? it's really getting up. Uh, what'd you say? What's a computer? Oh, what's yeah, like that commercial. But so <laughs> I am a little confused. Maybe you guys can clear this up for me. I was thinking Apple was doing MacBook and MacBook Pro. And now they brought the Air back after a couple of years of hiatus, right? Yeah. Well, actually, what they did was they got rid of MacBook. So they have okay, so they got rid of Pro. MacBook. Okay. Yeah. So, so now there's the Air and the Pro and there's no right. regular MacBook. Correct. Gotcha. So as far as the pricing, because the iPad Pro with the keyboard, I mean, isn't that near the price of the MacBook Air now? Like yeah. very, very close. The keyboard for the larger iPad, I believe, is $350. Yes. But there's one point that I think that Andrew left out when he talked about the, the keyboard with this crazy new hinge and it looked like the Say iPad it. is flo- floating, is that it's backwards compatible with the 2018 iPad yes. Pro. Yes. And I think that's a really big one. Um, mm-hmm. And that all iPads, including the entry-level iPad, get the trackpad support. Right. So that's part of iOS 13.4, which comes out next week. So if you do have a current iPad Pro or one of the recent iPads that supports iOS 13.4, you will get the cursor support. If you have an iPad Pro in particular, you can use the new trackpad keyboard. That doesn't come out until May, though. So it's cool to see Apple not only releasing new features and new hardware, but also which kind of seems more rare for them, bringing out new features that will be backwards compatible that you don't need to buy a new piece of hardware to access. That is unheard of for Apple for me. <laughs> and that's really good to hear, though. And I think there's ever been a sign of the current times we're in right now. It's what Apple's doing for backwards compatibility. So I love my iPad. I am on my iPad right now, video chatting with Kevin and Andrew while we're doing this. I can happily switch to Android and I've done that on my phones. I'm on Android right now, but my iPad is really my go-to computing device. And I think the 2018 iPad Pro was so good Mm. that there's very little reason for most people to upgrade. Mm. I haven't seen anything yet that this new Z processor can do. And maybe something from iOS 14 or iPad OS 2, whatever they call it, will have a exclusive only on the new hardware. But I mean, for everything that I've done on iPad, I've never once thought the iPad was slow. I have zero interest in augmented reality on my iPad. So the LiDAR LiDAR sensor is cool, I guess, if that's something that you're looking to do. I don't care. I don't take really any pictures on my iPad. So the extra camera sensors is of negative impact to me at all. Only reason I'm considering upgrading is because I really want an LTE version. 
Okay. And I could obviously get an LTE version on the 2018 and probably just buy a used one and still use that amazing and also very expensive new keyboard dock with the, the floating mm-hmm. display. So I think for most people, try to see what the refurb is going to be on the 2018 iPad Pros. I think you're still, it seems like you're going to get almost everything, which just goes to show how good the iPad Pro was when it yeah. came out in 2018. Now you're getting an eight core graphics processor, which we didn't have yes. last time. I think it yep. was a four three or four core graphics. So if you're into gaming or probably like one of the things in the commercial, which I haven't ever seen them advertise in an Apple commercial for the iPad before was video editing. So if you want to try to kind of replace, I think that's what this is all about. This is the iPad that's really going for the idea of you can legitimately replace at the very least an entry level laptop, a MacBook Air with this Mm -hmm. Do some of the pro, quote unquote, pro tasks that you would do and not experience any inconvenience as far as speed goes, especially with, you know, you combine the new speeds, the new graphics with the fact that you now have a pointer and trackpad, you basically don't even need to touch the display to start doing work. Very true. And how often do you know Apple to promote third party apps in their launch videos? Right. Very infrequently, right? Yeah, correct. I mean, they, they have iMovie to edit, and there's some Adobe options, and there's LumaFusion. I would imagine that coming with iOS 14 and iPadOS 2, whatever they announce next, say it. will be Final Cut for the iPad. I'm ready. And That'll I would imagine that... I'm so ready. And then there's a reason why people may want to consider the new iPad Pro. And mm. that, that's where, okay, so that four versus eight cores, that makes a difference, yeah. right? right? I want to edit on my iPad. Now I need to upgrade. Yeah. And sorry, I was gonna say to kind of touch on what John is saying. I mean, I have a 2018 and I don't see a reason to upgrade either because everything I've done has been so fast. I have never once said something is slow and I do editing on LumaFusion on my iPad 4K footage. I mean, you see me do it, Drew. And I've never ran into a situation where things have been slow. With that being said, that does show how great of a product this is and that it's really hard to continue to innovate to that next level. But I think this is a great entry point for someone who's ready to make that next level, but I don't think it's a necessary upgrade if you currently have a newer iPad Pro. It's not an upgrade for every refresh. I think you should wait a little bit, especially on iPads, because they are just that good. Agreed. We haven't seen a product with that much headroom than the 2018 iPad Pro. It is an amazing phone slow down. You can see more innovation maybe year over year with phones, but like, that yeah. 2018 iPad Pro is so good mm-hmm. and so capable that I agree with what you guys just said. Like, I think there's a very little reason unless there's some first party offering to to jump into the new gen iPad Pro. Now, having said that, are you guys getting one? I have placed an order. I also reached out to Apple to see about review units. But in case they say no, I placed an order. I think it's cool because kind of what you were just saying, John, what Apple has been doing is putting headroom in their devices for several years, at least in their iPad and and iPhone devices. Because we see even today, you can have an iPhone 6S that's getting new software updates because it's still strong enough. So when people say, why do you need the power of this A13 processor? Like it's not even being used to its maximum. Well, it's because people will be using this processor four to five years from now. And Apple still wants you to have a, a good experience with these devices. So an iPad Pro from 2018 will probably still be feeling nice and fast, you know, in 2022. So yeah, good on Apple true. for doing that. iOS 13.4, we just mentioned, that's what's going to power these new features on the iPad. But if you have an iPhone, that'll also be available for the iPhone. So it's iPad OS and iOS. New Memoji stickers. How you guys feel about that? New um, Memoji stickers. Come on. I think you're going to use them the most. So I really don't, I, I don't care about it. I just know you're going to send them to me as I much as possible. Will. So yeah, <laughs> my kids loved it. We video chatted with her, um, you know, FaceTime with my parents at night, but then they switched to Android. They've been a little bummed mm. uh, to not be able to, to have the Memoji when we do those duo calls. That uh, sucks. There's a few options in there, but it's not nearly as good. No, those but, weird uh, Samsung Memoji things are, are yeah, terrible. They, they show up, but they'll get over it because uh, <laughs> daddy's new phone folds. So uh. mm. They're they're out of luck. You just hand that to the children. <laughs> yeah, like, you do okay. not look at daddy's phone. You don't cough on daddy's phone. You don't drink near daddy's phone. Nope. Look at daddy's phone with reverence. That's it. iCloud Drive folder sharing. So basically, iCloud Drive becomes a clone of Dropbox. Finally, yes, huge, yes. huge, huge, yes, huge, yes, huge, yes, huge. yes, yes, yes. 
I'm all for it. Yes. Yeah. That was announced as a feature that was supposed to come in September and they had to delay it to make sure it was working right. But that's going to be nice because especially if you pay for storage on iCloud, you don't need to also pay for Dropbox. You can do the exact same thing. Share files individually, share folders, et cetera. That comes as part of the update as well. So if all of these big things are coming with like a pretty innocuous 13.4, yeah. like what's 14 going to bring? And what's iPad OS? Like those got to be pretty big, right? No, that's a good question because the rumor mill over the past week was saying that all of that cursor support that we just talked about and the trackpad, that was an iOS 14 feature or an expected hmm. iOS 14 feature. So being that it's coming now, it's like, okay, what is coming for the iPad in September? I've heard rumors of a revolutionary. I don't even know if I can say it here. Just say it. All right. I'm going to say it. Just say it to just us. Just, we'll just, tell just friends. Else. So I have heard, and I, I don't know if it's confirmed for the new iPad OS, but from reliable sources that Apple's mm-hmm. working on like a crazy, I consider it revolutionary software feature. So the home screen for Apple has stayed pretty stagnant, right? It's mm-hmm. pretty much except for the last iPad OS. What I hear is coming to iOS 14 and get ready for this. It's being able to place a single icon the bottom of the page. Ooh. Now let that sink in for a minute. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. Let that <laughs> let that sink in. Just a single icon right there. Bam. Ooh, move your icons where you want Anywhere them. Anywhere you want. Ooh. It takes courage. Courage. <laughs> it does take courage. Bravery and yeah. a foresight to where the industry is heading. 2020 knocking Intr- down barriers. <laughs> to man. where it's heading. Well, the one thing I heard about iOS 14, I'll tell you guys now. All right. On the same topic of the home screen. <gasps> Is that Don't you will be it, able Drew. to have a list view of all your apps. Oh, <gasps> oh. what? So Wait just like Wait on the Apple like, Watch, how you like can a have list? a list view on your Apple Watch of all your apps. You can have a scrollable. Remember Windows Phone, how you had a, a scrollable view. And a lot of Android, Android phones had that, too. A lot of uh, launchers had that. OK, so a scrollable view that can be sorted by alphabetical or by notifications or by importance. You can stick some in there and you can even tack specific apps in multitasking so you always have let's just say twitter as your first tile in multitasking Hmm. ios 14 i hate to be the one that says android did it first because apple does things slowly but like really a list of you and they're gonna make a huge deal about it of course yeah yeah wait a minute defining lists will it be as big a deal as they made about dark mode yeah apple view 2020 (laughs) well it's funny it's gonna be called list or something but we call it app drawer on Android, yeah. and, th- and that's been the thing, right? It's, no, it's been like I'm talking years. about a list, though. A list, like oh, it's a list. Order. Oh, like yeah. remember, when, remember Windows Phone? Oh, it's a list. It's yeah, yeah. A drawer. The, the Windows Phone, so not the app drawer, because the iPhone itself just looks like an app drawer, but it'll yeah. be a, yeah. a scrollable list view on your home screen of all your apps. So rather than having to swipe horizontally, you swipe vertically. It's something that's new visually for iOS, and even if it's something right. as small as a new list view, like heck, it's something new, right? Like that's something. Sure. That's, that's a step in the right direction. <laughs> sure, sure. I'm not excited. <laughs> so speaking of like headroom on the iPads, you could argue that iOS was designed so well mm-hmm. so many years ago that they've had 13 generations now of headroom to perfect it. Now, yeah. admittedly, as somebody who switched to Android, I'm a, now I'm a little bit Apple salty because I feel like I get, to, I get the right to be. <laughs> but I just find that very interesting that, that it was designed so well that a lot of people are clamoring for changes just for changes sake. Even if I don't know if those changes are necessary because the experience on iOS is still so solid and just so good. I agree. All right. That's the new iPad. That's iOS 13.4. After the break, we're going to talk about our favorite tech for working from home as well as hands on with the Tesla Model Y. That is coming up next. On Geared Up. Big thank you to National Car Rental for sponsoring this week's episode of Geared Up. Travel tech can make you a master road warrior. You know what else puts you in control of your business trip? National Car Rentals Emerald Club. You can bypass the counter, choose any car on the aisle, and go. It feels good to be in the driver's seat, doesn't it? Go national, go like a pro. Subject to availability and other restrictions. Welcome back to Geared Up, brought to you by National Car Rental. I'm Andrew Edwards, and it is now time for the National Car Rental story of the week. As you know, Geared Up is sponsored by National Car Rental. And if you don't know, I also do a show with National Car Rental on YouTube called 
technically speaking, where I bring you the latest, my picks for the best tech for business travel, whether you're business traveling or even whether you're going for leisure travel, there's a lot of tech out there that can make your travel more efficient or even more fun. You can check these episodes out at the nationalcar.com control center or go to youtube.com slash national car rent. The latest tech puts you in the driver's seat. National Car Rentals Emerald Club will keep you there. Once again, big shout out and thank you to National Car Rental for sponsoring Geared Up. It's now time for the National Car Rental Story of the Week. It's an interesting week, guys. A lot of people have found themselves at home a lot more, working from home, going to school from home, obviously with the coronavirus happening across the world and here in the United States. How have you guys been handling that? I'm assuming, well, John, you and I both work from home anyway, but Kevin, I'm assuming you're working from home now too. Yeah, I'm handling it okay. I did leave the house yesterday though to get a haircut. Oh, of but course. even then, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't miss my haircut. Every For other those Tuesday, who don't know, haircut. Kevin gets like 16 haircuts a month. Every other Tuesday, I get a haircut. <laughs> I might change it to every 10 days. But, anyways, I went to the grocery store for my mom. My parents are both in their 70s, right? So, to prevent them from leaving the house, I go grocery shopping for them mm-hmm. to kind of find things they need or what have you. And, and I do get stir crazy. And it's just very eerie to kind of like go through a grocery store and no one's talking and everyone was keeping their Mm. distance when someone coughed or sneezed. Everyone looked at them with a weird face and a weird eye. So I've been doing okay. I mean, I tend to stay home often, but even just knowing I have to be home sort of makes me go a little stir crazy. I think I agree with that because I'm usually, so like I said, I work from home. So, you know, I wake up and I go to my home office and I just, I'm just here all day, but it's different when it's like, Hey, you have to stay home. All of a sudden it's like, wait, why? I want to go out now. Yeah. Now I would like to leave the house because you told me that I shouldn't. Yep. Why are we Same. like this? We're defiant. We're defiant type of people. <laughs> yeah, it's been weird being at home. And my I have three kids. I have a, a six, a four, and a nine-month-old. And school's been kind of indefinitely postponed for them. So we're all at home trying to maintain some semblance of normalcy and not just let them sit and you know play video games and watch TV, but sort of keep right. an educational program going for them while I'm still trying to work because – you know, got to pay for a house to stay in Of course, while we're working from it. So it's been tricky. My wife has taken the brunt of it. It's been hard. And like you said about your parents, my grandparents are 90 and 91 years old. Oh, man. And they're in a retirement community that's like on complete lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet. Understandably so, right? So I had to go yesterday to pick up their taxes so I could bring it to the accountant for them. And like, I couldn't even get near them. Mm. You know, they had to like wave at me from afar. So it's, it's weird. That's tough. It's strange. It's definitely a very different reality, but it is what it is. And uh, hopefully everybody keeps their distance. And this too, like most things will eventually pass. Absolutely. So let's talk about what we want to talk about in this segment is now that a lot of people are having to stay home and work from home, a lot of people for the first time having to work from home. What are some pieces of tech that we can recommend that would kind of help people out in this transition to working at home versus working in an office. John, why don't we start right. with you? I'm going to start because I my, my piece of tech is something that I know whatever you guys are going to recommend, you're going to need. You're going to need internet to right. work at home. <laughs> you're going to need whatever you guys are going to pick is somehow going to be streaming something. And you might not realize with your router that you get from whoever your internet provider is, it might not reach all of your house. And when you are stuck in your house, you want to take advantage of every square foot of space you have, no Absolutely. matter how big it is. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to recommend a really good mesh networking system. And a lot of people are are sort of rushing to Wi-Fi 6, and rightfully so. You get a lot of better theoretical speeds from Wi-Fi 6 or some Wi-Fi 6 mesh options. As somebody who appears to live in a Faraday cage, where really <laughs> this is where all wireless, cellular, and otherwise go to die, I had an enterprise system in my house. I had a full ubiquity hardwired system in my house, and I just took it out and moved to a mesh system. A tried and true non Wi Fi 6, but it works incredibly well and easy to maintain. Euro. Mm. Not a sponsor, but if they want to, what's up, Euro? <laughs> um, but it uh, has, has worked absolutely great. Since I did hardwire my house, I can actually hardwire each one of the access points. So my system's not technically meshed right now. I just have three access points over my house, mm. which has been really good. But if you don't know what mesh is, essentially, you can plug in one box or kind of looks like a little cube your modem with an ethernet cable and you could put two three four as many you want others around your house and they'll sort of talk to each other and push out internet in areas where maybe just that one wouldn't have reached yes and that's a good that's a good suggestion i actually have a wi-fi 6 mesh 
here at my home. I have the Ubiquity Amplify Alien. Yeah, so I have people love that one. It's really good. I have two of them in my house. Previously, I was using Eero and I needed four. So these two are actually providing the same amount of coverage as four Eros did. A little more expensive, but obviously it's because it's the the more future looking technology with Wi-Fi 6. Kevin, I think you also have a, a mesh network too, right? Yeah, I actually switched over to Alien as well. Mm. No, it's great because originally I had a mesh set up and I had to have three access points. And now I just have the Alien and I have one one down here in the basement and one upstairs on the main level. And I have signal all the way out to my mailbox. Like as I'm pulling into my driveway, I get a signal, which is nice. So when the summer comes around, I can sit on the patio, go outside. I still have a good connection, which is good. That's very nice. Mm. So, so John's suggestion is to eliminate those Wi-Fi dead spots in your yes. home by upgrading to a mesh Wi-Fi network. All right, my suggestion is for things like we're doing right now, we're recording a podcast, but a lot of people are also finding themselves having virtual meetings. So you're still meeting with coworkers and you're doing either Zoom meetings or WebEx or FaceTime or whatever it might be. One thing that I recommend is a good pair of noise canceling headphones. So whether it's an AirPods Pro, or whether it's something that's a little more expensive, like a Sennheiser pair or a Sony pair, it's nice to be able to hear exactly what you're talking about and who you're talking to without having that background noise. So if the kids are screaming somewhere in the house, you don't have to hear them. Doorbell rings, noise outside, whatever it might be, allows you to focus on the task at hand. Are you guys using noise canceling headphones? Always. Yeah. hundred percent of the time. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, at I, all times I, I, yes I, perpetually whether they're airpods probes bose 700 sony is like yes always have noise canceling headphones yeah so yeah i guess it's my turn as far as work at home stuff so they left mine for last because it's not sexy but I, I care about your body so we're going to talk about taking care of your body wow. so your sexy sexy body your sexy body let's keep it sexy so if you work in a modern like work environment odds yeah. are they spent some money on a nice chair, nice desk, and things like that. When you go home, typically it's a downgrade, right? Typically Mm -hmm. you have a cheap chair you bought from Staples five years ago that has a little squeak and all these things. So- 30 bucks. Yeah, I recommend spending the money and actually getting yourself a decent chair, something that you can protect your back in, and also a sit-stand desk. They're coming down in price, but being able to stand up a little bit during your workday and, and sit down when you need to, they say when you stand up, it increases your circulation, and also you're more at the task at hand. You're not leaning back and being tired. It keeps your heart rate mm-hmm. a little elevated so you can actually get more work done. So you're not working later because of you're falling asleep at your desk. So I do recommend a sit-stand desk. There's so many of them. You can get them at Ikea, Amazon, wherever. They're all over the map as far as pricing. I've seen 200 bucks and I've seen up to $1,500. So what are you using? I am using Apex sit-stand desk. This one is a more advanced when it has presets so I can push like three and it goes to a certain level or push two and it changes. So it's a little overkill for most people, but there's some sit stand desk that's crank where you kind of crank it up to your perfect level and, and that's it. You don't have to buy the whole desk. You just buy the legs and you put your desk on top of it. And mm. I do stand up. I'll say about half my day. I am standing up at my desk. That's an upgrade I need to make. I have a, a desk that doesn't rise. It's, it's just no. there. So I'm just sitting all day, which is not good. No, and you're a shorter guy, so you don't really need to do too much as far as a sit stand desk. All you need to do is get a couple milk cartons, set your desk on that, and I, I think you'll be, I think you'll be fine. Look how that just went. Get See, yourself a thimble, sit guy. on it. And you're gonna be fine <laughs> doing what you're doing, little man. <laughs> My God. Hey, how about if you're at home, stuck at home, you're not supposed to go out, you're not supposed to go to the gym. Oh, Kevin has been <laughs> killing it. I got a Peloton bike a couple months ago. Kevin has been destroying it on his Peloton that he just brought in with ease. I'm giving you props. Get yourself something to work out on and stay healthy if you can't go out. Yeah. You've had your Peloton a little longer than a couple months, Andrew. Got to be honest. Four or five months. Something like that. Yeah. A little long. Anyways, we got to get your numbers up, Drew. You're not looking good right now. 30 minutes. 30 minutes is one fiftieth every day, Drew. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you are as motivational as the Peloton instructor. Can you give me one fiftieth, Drew? Can you give me one fiftieth? I'll give you one fiftieth. <laughs> All right. Whatever. It's one forty eighth. All right, John. Next topic. Yes. I ordered the Tesla Model Y the instant it went on sale. Roughly, what was it like a year and a half ago, something like that? Yeah. As did I. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize that. So I actually got my email. Hey, your Tesla Model Y is coming soon. They told me I'd get it by the end of March. 
They started deliveries this past weekend. I was not a part of that initial delivery wave despite getting my order in within eight and a half seconds of when they went on sale. That's neither here nor there. You were able to get your hands on the new Model 3. Now, the three of us on this podcast right now are Model Tesla y. owners. Oh, yes, yes, Model Y. Sorry. You got your hands on the Model Y. You have some firsthand impressions of this vehicle. I do. And I'm very excited to to hear about them. Yeah, me too. All right. So thank you. I got my Model 3 in December. I was debating to getting a Model Y. I wanted a lease and I didn't want to buy. And so I figured whenever the Model Y came, it was going to be buy only, which it, it appears that was yes. correct. So I still love my Model 3. But oh, man, that Model Y looked so good. It was a blue performance with the giant 21 inch tires. Mm -hmm. All the things that I wish would be fixed about my Model 3 were fixed on the Y. Oh, really? So what do you mean by that? Don't tell me that. So power hatch, for example. That's something that I feel like for the price I paid for my car, I should have had something that was power on the back of it. The storage space in the hatch is gigantic. I would even say it looked even bigger than when I had my Model X. I mean, huge. What? Mm. It was huge. Hmm. Jar. In fact, there's a video up on my channel comparing the three and the X. It went live at eight o'clock this morning on the dot. OK, we will put a link to that video in the show notes below. So you can see how big the hatch is and there's under storage and there's like a second under storage in front of that where the third row would go. If you got it, a huge frunk. Then there's six inches of storage under the seats. There's just a ton of storage. It would have been a lot easier to put three car seats in there. A lot of other small improvements to USB type C is nice. So... In the back, where there's two USB Type A ports on the three, now it's Type C. Nice. That was really nice. It comes standard with wireless charging. Your kids need the Type C. I, I mean, listen, everybody needs Type C, <laughs> except for HEP. Other things that were nice that it was cool to see: wireless charging is in there for your phones. You don't have to yes. pay hundred bucks for a pad. And I guess I can't even call it a Chrome delete since it was never deleted. But it's anodized metal now that looks like a Chrome. Oh, delete. nice, nice, nice. That's nice. It, and it's you know my Chrome delete just vinyl stickers on mine, right? Probably right. yours too. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, exactly. this is like into the metal, and it looked it looked good, and it looked noticeably better than a regular Chrome delete. That's nice. It just looked like an earlier Model Three, and where I thought that the Model X was not going to win any beauty contests from the side or back, this is a beautiful looking car from those angles. So can you talk about what it's like to sit in the car? Because that's the yeah. one thing I can't really wrap my head around from photos sure. so, is you get in. How much roomier does it feel? So notice a couple of things that were different. And again, this is coming from a, a performance. And this the car I was looking at had 21 inch tires. So certainly I was sitting higher up in the car. Looking out, there's very little difference from a Model 3. But you are yeah. aware that you're sitting up a little bit higher. But if you've never sat in a Model 3, you're not coming from driving one, you won't notice a difference. Where you do notice a difference, though, is behind you. So because it's a hatchback, the rear visibility was actually not great. It was actually mm. a very small piece of glass. So obviously you can use the camera and you can sort of mitigate that without much difficulty. Uh, really solid visibility, though, out of the left and right sides. So for lane changes and that kind of thing. So that was interesting. And then also on top, pretty much stretching from where the driver sits all the way back to where the hatch starts, the single piece of glass. The Model 3 is kind of a bar in the middle that yeah. separates that a little bit. That was super cool. Now, a lot of cars have that now. I think Jaguar I-Pace has that. A lot of, a lot of cars have that similar thing. But it's very cool to experience something that's different from the 3. So I think it's the Y is kind of just like peak Model 3, right? It's the evolution. It's yeah. The Pokemon has evolved to its next phase. And that's kind of what we have, I think, with, with the Y. Man, I'm excited to get mine in. Did you keep yours? So you oh, let me ask one more point. I couldn't oh, drive more. the car. Okay. It, I couldn't drive the car. It wasn't mine. The owner didn't want me to drive it. But one thing was interesting. So I was inside filming and I closed the doors and closed the windows. And, and you guys have threes. You can attest. You hear a lot of wind noise, right? Mm -hmm. People are outside talking. You could hear them. Yep. I had guys right outside talking and I couldn't hear them at all huh. from inside the car. What? I was shocked. I don't think there's any like active noise canceling happening or anything. But it was hmm. very surprising to say the least how quiet that was. So I imagine some of those noise issues that have plagued the three are not going to be the case with the Y. And I did cancel my Y order when I ordered my three. I didn't see much of a point okay. yeah. in getting both. I did a two-year lease so I could figure out maybe I'll go a Y next or a, a truck. I've Tesla talked truck. A lot about trucks. <laughs> I've Tesla talked a truck. lot about trucks on this podcast. Yeah. But it was, it was really good. And if you're looking for a car that can hold a lot of people, can haul a lot of things, look good and be fast, I think the Model Y really delivers on those things that Tesla promised. Mm. Kevin, how are you feeling about this? Because I know, so for those who don't know the story, when I got my Model 3, 
I instantly started telling Kevin, hey, listen, you're driving a car that's like a, a 2008 model, something like that. What was it? 2009 Hyundai Genesis R-Spec. Hyundai Genesis, which you loved. You have to say R-Spec, though. And it was paid <laughs> off. <laughs> it was paid off in full. It's, it's been paid, paid off. off is nice. It's been paid yes. off for paid a while. Off is very nice. Yeah. But I was like, yeah. listen, you, like me and John, like we love tech. At the end of the yeah, day, of course. we're of course. into this stuff. Yeah. And as I started driving the Model 3, I was like, this is a car you'd love. You were telling me adamantly, I will never own a Tesla. I don't need that. And I was like, but you got autopilot. You got all these feet. You're like, I don't need that. I got my car. It's paid off. But he's, a, he's like a Detroit guy, too, though. Yeah, like it's, that's true. That's true. Oil's in the blood there. Yeah, it's, but, it's a little different. But yeah. Yeah. it started soon after. It started crumbling. He started texting me. Hey, here, here's, a, here's, a used, here's a used Model S. Maybe I'll take a look at this. It started crumbling. It's slowly but surely, eventually, yeah, a little bit. we yeah. went to New York for, was it a Samsung oh, event? It was. Man, I, I can't remember. No, it was, uh, it was OnePlus. Okay, we went to New York for the OnePlus event. And we had you take a test drive. We went yeah. to the Tesla spot. We had you take a test drive. And it was all over for you. It was from over. There. It was over. Before the test drive, I knew it was over, Drew. I was holding on to, to dear life. <laughs> and the second, I, the second I hit that pedal and the, she put it in fart mode, it was over. <laughs> <laughs> fart, fart mode she fart drives mode. the conversion. Fart, fart mode sealed st- the deal for me. So, I mean, as John said, you have to understand, I'm from Detroit, right? It's all about muscle cars and, you know, all about Chevy and Ford and GM and Mustang mm-hmm. and all those names, right? That runs thick. That runs thick in Detroit. And also yeah. the whole thing with Tesla not being able to sell in Michigan. And I was concerned about, you know, things like that. And so I had to do some research from other Tesla owners in Michigan to see what the experience has been. And right. just a, a lot of things kind of played into it that way. And also I wanted a SUV. I wanted something bigger. I have a son and, you know, I want to put stuff. I have my golf clubs and my softball right. gear and all that stuff. So I wanted more room. And But the Model X, for me, it just wasn't feasible to pay what a Model X costs. I, I just didn't, I wasn't comfortable going from no car payment to a thousand dollar car payment, right? I just wasn't comfortable with that. And then the Model Makes 3 sense. to me was a compromise because I, I got my foot into a Tesla without going all in and uh, buying yeah. a Model X. It was a good compromise and I'm extremely happy with my purchase. And I will say that my next car will most likely be a Tesla. Just I just love the technology inside and just, I feel cool in the car. You know, I, I feel like a cool dude in the car. And uh, I can't say that cool about dude. my preview. <laughs> I can't say cool about my dude. <laughs> I am a, I feel like a, uh, a cool guy. I'm, I'm, like, a, <laughs> I'm a cool dude in the car. Cool. Hey, when I drive by, they say, hey, who's that cool dude? And I say, hey, it's me. It's Kevin. So now you were the other, a few weeks ago, you were talking about, I don't know how serious you were, but you were saying like, what would it look like if you traded in your vehicle to get a Model Y instead? Because that was your one main thing with the car was you liked the Model 3, but you were really yeah. worried about the size and lack of space. Yeah. It's small. And for me sitting in the car, it's, it still feels small. I'm six foot two and it still feels small. And then I have a car seat always in the car too. I don't take yeah. it out. So it's just the car always has felt small to me because I've always had bigger cars. So I'm not going to sell my car and get a Y. I was just wondering what it would look like. You know, I always wonder and always kick ideas around, but this might be, I mean, eventually I might get a Model Y or whatever's available at the time I'm looking for another at car. But but it's hard because I had my last car for 10 years. I mean, do I see myself owning this car for 10 years? I don't know. That's the thing. So I've always looked at a car as point A to point B. This is the first time I actually enjoyed a car as much as I'm enjoying now. So yeah. I'm not sure if that's going to make me want to trade it in and enjoy the next one because I'm, I'm not looking at it as a tool anymore. I'm looking at it as, a, as something fun and something enjoyable. So I just don't yeah. know how I feel in a couple of years. I got you. John, what would you recommend or what would you say to people who are on the fence between the two? Who is the three optimized for versus so, the Y? If you want to lease a car, then get the three. There's no option right now to lease a car. Probably won't come for another year. So that that's a real easy one. If you don't need to move a lot of people and you want the fastest, most sporty car available, then the 3 is for you 100%. I still think the 3 probably looks a little bit better than the Model Y. If you need to move a lot of people, you don't want to sacrifice performance or really much of a range issue either. And you live in a cold weather area, the Model Y actually has a heat pump mm. that the 3 mm. doesn't sort of to keep range pretty consistent. I would go Model Y, and I would probably say for people on the fence, if you just want to buy a car, I would just do the Model Y. It's going to be an infinitely more practical car for you, and you don't know how your car needs may change. Maybe you got a kid, and having a hatchback is really nice for an impromptu changing table. Oh, yeah. Whereas with the <laughs> Model 3, you know, you got a trunk. You can't really uh, change a baby back there. So I would say for most people, the Y is probably 
a better choice. And again, that's somebody who just got a Model 3 a few years ago and now maybe regrets it. <laughs> but I think that's probably the right way to go. Okay. Well, hey, that was this week's episode of Geared Up. Hey, Kevin, thanks again for joining us on this yeah. show. Once again, tell people where to find you if they want to hear more of your expertise. Sure. You can find me on anywhere on the internet at Tech Ninja Speaks, TikTok, Pinterest. You can find me there, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, everything. Tech Ninja I like how TikTok Speaks. came first. Yeah, you know. Support a man who, <laughs> support a man who leads in with TikTok and Pinterest. You know yes, what I'm right. really, I have to get those numbers. Lean, lean in hard to that. I have to get those numbers up, man. Other numbers are okay. I have to get those numbers up. <laughs> and that is it for this edition of Geared Up. Thank you so much for listening. Of course, you can catch John and I on YouTube. I'm at youtube.com slash gear live. And John is at youtube.com slash John for Lakers. Feel free to head over and subscribe to our channels to stay up to date on all the latest tech. Speaking of subscribing, you can subscribe to Geared Up in your favorite podcast app if you haven't done so already. Just search Geared Up, that's two words, not one, in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Casts, Overcast, or really wherever you choose to listen. If you like what we do, please consider leaving us a rating and review. It really helps other people find the show. Geared Up is a Gear Live podcast, and you can see more from us at GearLive.com. Thank you so much for listening. For John Rettinger, I'm Andrew Edwards, and we'll catch you in the next episode.